Picture this. It's early 2008. President Mwai Kibaki is in his office at State House Kenya, deep in thought about the ongoing post-election violence. His country is at a tipping point, on the brink of being consumed by the chaos. Amidst this turmoil, an urgent call breaks the tension. The voice on the other end of the line is Minister of Information, Mr. Mutahi Kagwe, calling from 7,500 kilometers away in Abu Dhabi. This wasn't an ordinary call. It was a call that marked the culmination of a journey that began two years prior, a journey towards a dream of seamless and affordable communication for all Kenyans. It all started at an insurance industry dinner in early 2006 at the Panari Hotel in Nairobi. As the guest of honor, Mr. Kagwe was asked about his aspirations for the ICT ministry. His response? He wanted Kenyans to communicate easily and cheaply with the world. At that time, communication was a luxury. A one-minute phone call within the Safaricom network during peak hours would cost 35 shillings, even more to other networks. Kenyans would wait until off-peak hours to make cheaper calls, leading to a congested network in the evenings. Internet connectivity was even worse, slow, unreliable and expensive, as the whole country relied on satellites for access. To bring his vision to life, Mr. Kagwe knew that Kenya had to abandon satellites and join the global fiber-optic network. This meant laying fiber-optic cables under the sea, a costly but necessary venture. The country joined other African nations to co-found the South African fiber-optic cable EC. However, the journey was far from easy. Frustrations grew with endless meetings and conflicts among partner countries, leading Kenya to consider building its own cable. The call from Abu Dhabi was a pivotal moment in this journey. Mr. Kagwe, together with his fellow ICT ministers from Uganda and Tanzania, were determined to achieve digital independence for their countries. They were on a mission to find a way to build their own cable, a mission that would set the stage for Kenya's leap into the digital future. And so, the stage was set for Kenya to step into the digital future. At this time, making a phone call or getting an internet connection in Kenya was like trying to catch a greased pig. Communication wasn't just a luxury, it was a daily struggle. The outrageous cost of phone calls was a significant burden for the Kenyan people. Imagine paying the equivalent of a small meal just to make a one-minute phone call within the same network during peak hours. And if you wanted to call someone on a different network, the cost could be even higher. The result, people had to wait until late in the evening for off-peak rates, which led to another problem, network congestion. It was like everyone in the country trying to squeeze through a single door at the same time. The network was so overwhelmed that making a call in the evening was akin to winning a lottery. But if you think that was bad, the situation with the internet was even worse. It was a nightmare, to say the least. The entire country relied on satellites for internet access. Now, if you've ever tried to download a file or stream a video using a satellite connection, you know it's not exactly the fastest way to surf the web. It's more like trying to run a marathon while wearing a pair of concrete shoes. And let's not even get started on the reliability or lack thereof. On top of that, the cost of a satellite link was astronomical, making it a luxury few could afford. The internet, which was supposed to be a tool for communication and learning, was out of reach for many Kenyans. So there you have it. High costs, unreliable connections and slow speeds were the trifecta of communication woes in Kenya. It was a frustrating situation that needed a solution and fast. For Kenya to communicate easily and cheaply with the world, it was clear the satellite era had to end. The solution was clear, yet massive. Abandon satellites and join the global fiber optic network. The path to this new horizon began with Kenya joining hands with other African nations, co-founding the South African fiber optic cable known as ESI, a step that was thought to be a stride towards a brighter digital future. However, ESI was far from the reality of ESI. The partner countries found themselves tangled in constant disagreements. Their unity was strained by differing visions and expectations. The South Africans holding a controlling interest in the cable saw it as a golden goose a lucrative business venture that would benefit their wealthy pension funds. But for Kenya, the cable represented something different. It was not just a business venture, it was a development tool, a public utility akin to a road that would pave the way for the country's burgeoning ICT sector to take flight. An asset that was envisioned to connect Kenyans to the world, making communication easier and more affordable. The discord among the EC partners grew, 
with the situation becoming increasingly untenable, Kenya found itself caught in endless meetings, grappling with the unsettling reality of putting its digital economy at the mercy of the South African pension funds. The dream of a digitally connected Kenya seemed to be slipping away, but Kenya was not ready to let go of its ambition. And so, in a bold move, the country made a decision to stay in EC, but also to forge its own path. The Information Minister, Mr. Kagwe, brought together his fellow ICT ministers from Uganda and Tanzania, convincing them to join Kenya's plan. And so they embarked on a journey across the globe to the US, Spain, and finally the UAE, in search of a way to build their own cable. A cable that would be by East Africans, for East Africans, free from external control and manipulation. Kenya was ready to take control of its digital destiny, even if it meant going alone. Kenya was not alone in its digital aspirations. Uganda and Tanzania were ready to join the journey. The vision of a connected East Africa was not just a dream, but a necessity for progress. The information ministers from these three nations found themselves united in a common cause. They embarked on a global expedition to seek out the means to create their own undersea fiber optic cable. Their journey began in the United States, the heart of the tech world. They visited Tyco, one of the few companies globally with the capacity to build undersea fiber optic cables. It was an enlightening experience, opening their eyes to the complexities and potential of this technology, but it was also a sobering reminder of the enormity of the task they had undertaken. Undeterred, they pressed on, their resolve only strengthening. From the US, they journeyed to Spain, continuing their quest for knowledge and resources. Each step brought them closer to their goal, their vision becoming clearer with every passing day. The final leg of their journey took them to the United Arab Emirates. Here, the reality of their ambitious project began to take shape. The ministers knew they had to make this work, not just for their own nations, but for the future of East Africa. Then, in a moment of inspiration, Information Minister Kagwe came up with the name for their ambitious project. On the bus ride back to the hotel from a meeting in Baltimore, he swung around in his seat and announced his brainwave. They would call their cable TEAMS, an acronym for the East African Marine System. This title was more than just a name, it was a declaration of unity, of shared ambition and of a joint commitment to progress. And so the dream of TEAMS was born. This was not just the birth of a fiber optic cable, but the dawn of a new era for East Africa. An era of connectivity, of shared resources, and of a united front in the face of digital advancement. And it all began with a dream, a journey, and a bus ride in Baltimore. The impact of fast internet on Kenya has been nothing short of transformative. It's as if a switch was flipped and the country was suddenly thrust into the digital age. In the realm of education, fast internet access has allowed for a revolution in learning. Students in remote corners of the country can now connect with teachers in the city or even professors in overseas universities, expanding their horizons like never before. The digital divide is shrinking, and with it, the gap in educational opportunities. In the business sector, the effects have been equally profound. Small businesses and entrepreneurs are now able to connect with customers and suppliers across the globe, opening up new markets and opportunities, e-commerce has flourished, and Kenyan products and services are making their mark on the international stage. Moreover, the fast internet has spurred innovation, with tech startups sprouting up across the country, earning Kenya the title of Silicon Savannah. Communication, too, has been revolutionized. The days of waiting until off-peak hours to make a call are long gone. Now, Kenyans can connect with each other and with the world at the click of a button. Social media platforms have become a vibrant space for conversation, debate, and the sharing of ideas. And let's not forget the broader socio-economic impacts. The fast internet has created jobs, both directly in the tech sector and indirectly through the growth of businesses that it has enabled. It has also facilitated access to public services with many government processes now digitized for ease and convenience. The fast internet has brought Kenya closer to the rest of the world and in some ways it has brought the world closer to Kenya. It has opened up opportunities, fostered innovation and fueled development in ways that would have been unimaginable just a few years ago. In the end, the journey was worth it. Kenya had not just caught up with the world, it was ready to lead.